Hello Summoners and welcome to the Oceanic University Championship. Today we've got for you the New Zealand qualifying rounds. It's the final best of three. We've got Team Dream coming from University of Auckland Dream. and also from University of Auckland is Woofer Doge and they're playing off for the one spot that New Zealand gets in the next round. Uh, this is going to be some very hot competition. Dream battled their way through the group of death coming up against some of the longest standing teams and some of the best teams in New Zealand, including uh, the likes of Imperium, and came through that undefeated. So, potentially coming into this matchup a little bit favoured. I'd say the uh, Woofer Doge have their work cut out for them. But before we get too far into these picks and bands, I'd like to introduce myself, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt Pixie Carroll, and casting with me today is also Matt Smite Ross. Matt, say hi. Hey guys, and as much as Pixie may not like to uh, admit it, and your name's got to be Smixie. I mean, come on, it's it's, oh, it's, it's easy. It sounds but, like an STD. Kind of does. But in any case, let's have a look at these bands coming out straight away. Victor, no surprises there. Zenza, a high-rated mid lane player, and Victor just top tier right right away. If you're not going to first pick him, definitely get him out of the champion pool. The, the thing with Victor right now is as well, and I like to talk about this whenever he is picked is. He's a really, really flexible mid laner to build your team comp around because he can suit a siege type comp or a poke comp or a team fight comp or a pick comp. He, he can go in just about anything. Like he's the jack of all trades and you can't even say jack of all and master of none. He's almost like a master of all trades, which is a terrifying thing. So batting him out uh, actually opens up the mid lane just a little bit. Also Shen and Elise coming out right now. I'm seeing a bit of a trend here. Uh, Dream batting out Alistair and Shen, they seem to want to avoid some of the harder forms of engage and pressure that can come out from uh, Woofer Doge. And also no surprises, Alistair and Rumble, two key bands when you're playing against the lineup that's coming out of Dream right now. Bark Bark absolutely known for his Alistair, going all the way back. Uh, I, I believe it was season three, I think, he tried getting Challenger back in the playing Jurassic only period. Alistair with his duo Q partner who was Tam Jong Q was playing only Rumble. I believe that was how it worked. And so pretty clear bands. You want to take those champions away from those two picks. Just, I, I'm guessing that's going to be banned every single match in this best of three. First pick, though, is actually going to be Nidalee. And yesterday, in the Victorian qualifying rounds, we did not see a single Nidalee pick because she was banned every single game. So obviously, Mr. O2 won there. He's looking to pick that up in the jungle. And we'll see how Woofer Doge are looking to respond to that with their first two picks. Yeah, I actually really like the Nidalee straight off the bat. I mean, you look at what's banned out, a lot of it's uh, some of the harder engage and some of the bigger team fight threats. Of course, there's still things like Orianna and some of the big AoE crowd control that have slipped through the cracks there. But uh, taking a Nidalee, you know, something that has a little bit more poke and pick potential, I think is quite a, a nice pickup as a first pick here. And it certainly doesn't force Dream into one kind of composition. There's still a lot of flexibility that can come out there. Though it does push them away from... Uh, the more you know, all-in team fight AOE team compositions, and actually the Oriana being dropped at the last minute there for Doge in favor of Irelia. So Irelia Javan, that's a bit of a dive buddy system, don't you think? Yeah, Javan's a champion that we haven't seen for a little while now. Not since uh, Cinderhawk came out. He's been busy uh, helping. <laughs> with the, he, uh, I mean, been in earthquakes and all that. He was a little bit prevalent during the Cinderhawk meta, uh, did fall off eventually in favor of more damage-oriented bruises, uh, but now he, he's sort of coming back, but you still don't see him all that often. What he does still provide is a solid engage, one of the longest range engages in the game. If you can get that going, Aurelia can get in there very easily, so I imagine Dream, they're going to look for more of a slippery composition, something to make it a lot harder to engage on, so that they can play a lot more reactively, and able to defend we saw a lot of reactive play yesterday and it really came out on top for all the teams that employed that kind of strategy yeah you say slippery and there they are hovering over the fizz uh and also vane i would i would really like to see vane uh put in the hands of liberty he is a fantastic ad and the thing i always like to bring up with liberty is he is cool as a cucumber i've seen him get it out of some of the highest pressure situations without blowing a flash where most players would and on a champion like Vayne, where you can be a lot more vulnerable, especially early on in the game, uh, you know, with someone like a Javan out in the jungle, um, I think Liberty is the sort of player who can still sa stay fairly safe with that Vayne. And also it gives this team a little bit of insurance, if you will. You know, they've got the Fizz, they've got the Nidalee, they are decent threats with a good amount of pick potential, but Vayne gives them 
some options for the later game. Uh, I think that's a very smart pickup, and I think Liberty is the sort of player who is very capable of making the most out of that. But uh, let's take a look at what Doge uh, trying to cook up in response. And they're picking up a Slippery Champion for themselves as well. That Echo, one of the newer kids on the block. Just with that ultimate, once he hits level 6, so hard to catch as long as he's smart about it. He predicts games, uh, moves that are almost 4 seconds in advance, so he's able to escape. He can dive incredibly hard, and against the champions that are as slippery as these guys, Vayne, Fizz, Nidalee, you need to get in there, you've got to do the damage quickly, and then Echo has the tools to get out. So a good pickup for, from them. It's also a safer sort of mid laner. You're allowed to play uh, around a lot of the common mid laners too. So it, it, it's a good pickup in a blind mid lane matchup. So I like seeing that Echo pick come out straight away. And also picking up Jinx, just a, a nice late game AD carry, really scales very well, has the range advantage as well with that switcheroo switching up to the rockets to take advantage of Bane's weaker laning phase. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Dream try and go for a lane swap early on, but if uh, Doge are on the ball, they'll be able to get the vision down and force them into a 2v2. Speaking of on the ball, Orianna being locked in there, I, I really like that pickup, uh, and I feel like that doesn't necessarily punish Doge, uh, but of course Doge did hover over that Oriana. It's clearly something they were thinking about, and uh, that means it's not something they were probably considering playing around. Uh, and it actually fits quite nicely into this Dream Team comp. Like I said, they, they certainly feel a lot more pick-oriented, but just going with the Oriana and to a slightly lesser extent the Braum there, I really think solidifies them as having a bit of flexibility. They can be a very strong pick comp, but they have a bit of insurance for the late game. and. When you've got uh, the vein in there, I think that's a very important thing to have. So I think that, that Oriana really rounded out their team comp there. The only thing they're missing is an incredibly efficient ball delivery system. They do have the Fizz, but in reality, he's not someone you want hanging around in the middle of a team for too long. Uh, but it is still a doable thing. We'll have to see as well now what Doge opts to pick up as their support to round out the team comp. And it does look like it'll be the Leona. I don't believe any of these are placeholder picks as well. Uh, team's just going to swap out their champions. And, yep, no placeholders uh, confirmed. Okay, awesome. So we're going to get into the glorious three-minute delay. Uh, I've talked a little bit about uh, Dream's team comp. Do you want to talk about Doge's team comp here for a bit? Yeah, so Doge's team comp, you know, you could see the theme of it right from the start. They've got Jarvan, they've got Aurelia, they even added into it with Echo and uh, Leona. This is a dive comp and this is a hard diving comp. They want to get right in there, do as much damage as they can. But at the same time, it's going to be difficult to do that. I feel like Dream really drafted well against them because of how slippery their team composition is. That said though, Aurelia, Jarvan, they're very sticky champions as well. They can really get straight into your backline and they can continue to pursue. Aurelia with that low cooldown gap closer as well. And like I said before, Echo, who can get in, do his damage fast and get out. The only thing that I'm a little bit worried about is that it's leaving Jinx uh, stab, he's going to be a little bit vulnerable uh, on a very low mobility champion like Jinx, hard to escape from the diving champions like Fizz and even Nidalee, who can get into the back line, who can get to stab, and even with Leona there, with Pen Peng Yilang protecting him, they're still slippery champions. I mean, if Fizz gets to the back line, it's going to still be very hard to hit him with the Zenith Blade, uh, same thing with Nidalee jumping all over the place, so... They're going to have to uh, maybe rethink every single dive they do. If it starts going off well, then they'll start winning team fights because a lot of their front line from Dream are going to be forced into defense and trying to protect their own back line. Whereas if things, uh, if their engages don't go so well from the start, then Doge are going to have to look to leaving someone behind almost just to protect such a vulnerable AD carry like Jinx. Yeah, and the other thing with Jinx is she hates getting caught by that command shockwave. Positioning is so crucial for her, and a disrupt like that that totally throws her out of position is really, really hard to recover from as a Jinx player, especially if the rest of your team is left in a little bit of disarray after that fight, which they almost certainly will be. Now imagine then that gets followed up by something like a Glacial Fissure. Now as much as that's a best case scenario for Dream, it's a worst case scenario for Doge, and of course Dream are going to be looking for that best case scenario as often as they can find it. The thing I think rounds out this team comp is actually the Echo. Because he has, compared to the rest of the champions, a lot more flexibility in how his mobility can be used. Aurelia can go in, uh, Jarvan can go in and out, but there's quite a cooldown attached to it. Whereas Echo, 
he can go just about anywhere. He has to plan it a little bit in advance, but having that flexibility, if you plan well, is really, really crucial. And that could be the difference between, you know, one carry or even both carries getting caught in something nasty like a command shockwave and none of their carries getting caught if Zensa is quick with his fingers there. So I think it's going to be really crucial seeing how he plays that echo and also how he plays the lane against Oriana early on. Yeah, and as much as the theme is really around the engage coming up from Doge, especially from Aurelia and Jarvan, I feel like the game is going to be mostly about their echo pickup. It's going to be Zensa, and a play that I'd like to see him do during team fights is get into the back line, like I said, do his damage quickly to either Liberty or Tamjong Q, get them nice and low for the bruises to clean up, and then use that chrono break to go straight back to the back line and look after Stab, look after him, and start damaging the not actually that tanky frontline. I mean, yes, they're slippery, yes, they're hard to catch, but it's still a Nidalee and a Fizz. They're still going to die very quickly if you ever do catch them and ever do get any damage down onto them. So a play like that where he gets the damage onto the backline and they can teleport back to look after his backline, I feel like would be a very interesting way of playing it and very, very effective. And it may be what they need during their team fights if they are going for a lot of 5v5s. I think you're dead right there, and uh, when you look as well at the defense that Dreamer brings to the table, you mentioned the tankiness on the front lane, but Braum is really their only big peel as well. I mean, granted, Oriana gives a bit of utility, and the Shockwave can be used as a disengage tool uh, if worst comes to worst. But really, Braum is all of the peel that Vayne has, and if he's in the wrong place at the wrong time, or even gets a little bit caught out, or even worse, Vayne gets caught out somewhere Braum can't help her, then... There's very little Braum can actually do. And even then, a lot of Braum's peel comes from soaking up damage and getting a few slows down with that Winter's Bite and the occasional stun with concussive blows. You want to use the Glacial Fissure a bit more aggressively, actually, which kind of removes it as a peel tool in most fights, unless you do just get really engaged upon and taken totally by surprise. Even then, it's something you maybe want to use to try and turn around the fight. So when you look at this team comp, they're very glass hammer if you will they will be amazing if they get good fights if they get a little bit caught out if things go a little bit subpar then it could all crumble very very quickly and on the flip side of that if doge are able to get onto vein which is arguably quite easy to do when you're running a javan and an aurelia then liberty could find himself in a bit of a rough spot in all of these fights all right, guys, we are loading into the Rift right now, and it's going to be the first game in the best of three series that is going to decide the top spot for New Zealand, is going to decide who moves on to the next round to represent New Zealand in the Oceanic University Championship to decide who's going to be the best student team in our entire region. Both teams moving out quickly. What do you expect to see from them here? Yeah, I, I'm thinking just fairly defensive starts, uh, but Dream do like to get a bit in their favor in the early game so we could see some small incursions more on the safe side of things just to get a couple of key wards down now the interesting thing is they did ping out uh just above the banana bush there but that's where the entirety of doge is so not really a safe place for them to go that being said they did see kun and the ward going down in the death bush there so they're not well, it's not a it's not a banana bush there. anymore it's, it's, it's not even curved that's that makes I me know. kind of sad I, I i can't i can't let go of the term banana bush though it will always be the banana bush to me because if it's not the banana bush then what difference is there between that and any other bush i know it's depressing but looking at the team positions right now and you are dead right. Both teams going for a bit more of a defensive play. No deep wards at all, which I'm kind of surprised to see. I would have thought that Dream would look to get some good vision down, go for a lane swap, just because, like we mentioned in uh, Team Select, Liberty uh, on Vayne, he's going to have a bit of a rough time in a 2v2. Just that's the nature of Vayne. You don't do too well early game, even with a good protective support like Brown. Jinx is going to be able to harass that champion straight out of lane if they're not careful. So. Like I said, kind of surprised they didn't go for any kind of lane swap, but then again, they didn't have the vision to do so. And I think that's going to be really, really key coming into this lane as well. The other thing to note, of course, uh, Stab and Peng Yiliang, uh, who we will likely just be calling Pen in teamfights for the sake of ease, they're going to get that Grob start. Whereas Liberty and O2-1, they're not going to take the crux. The early level 2 from Jinx and Leona is incredible. It's, it's so inc incredibly strong. And against, you know, a Brahmin of Vayne, 
that can easily turn into a kill if the lane goes a little bit in favor of Stab and Peng here. Yeah, definitely going to see a big advantage over to Stab and Peng here. Uh, especially once they get those minions down. As Bark Bark and Liberty arrived, actually, a few minions were already dead, so not only did they uh, lose out on the grom bonus that the Doge team are going to have, but oh, we're actually seeing actually in the ugly one just going right on it. And actually, that's a really smart move. That's a good way of keeping a bit of pressure off Liberty. Um, I mean, Vayne tends to be pushed in early on, and what you like to do when your bottom laner is a Vayne lane. You as the jungler likes to put a bit of pressure on that lane. Now, he has set it up so that he isn't going to get counter ganked out by Bonky Bonky earlier on. I think that's really, really smart by Ocean One. And he's already looking for a gank in the mid lane here. Yeah? Oh wow, very, very smooth moves indeed. Doesn't quite find anything. Aside from a little bit of damage on Zensa, actually, Liberty going aggressive at the bottom lane got a good chunk onto Stab. And again, they know that for a while at least they're fairly safe from Bonky Bonky. They can actually have these aggressive plays going on. Yeah, and you know, after all that action, I do want to bring it back to what O2-1 did. He started off the red buff, which is something that Nidalee can do. You can really start shredding the red buff down with all those traps. And then, because you didn't start on one of the smaller camps first, you're going to arrive at the enemy blue buff at the same time as the enemy jungler. And while he didn't quite force it... Oh, hang oh, on, Liberty! Peng, a massive Zenith is playing Bark Bark, getting stunned up for just a moment there. But they want to maybe turn this around, Liberty! Oh, they get the stun down on the steps. They've actually forced the flash away. He's so low, but so is Liberty. Cast the blows now on Peng. He's trying to go a great spot, but Liberty, he's cutting for his life. Another stun. First blood going over to Bark Bark, and Peng goes too deep. Punished like I've never seen before. And there it is. Liberty keeping his cool. It pays off for him. Meanwhile, O2-1 is now monkey monkey in the mid lane. Shredding down a red screen, but Birdie finds it. O2-1. And just like that, Dream step on the gas. And this is huge for Dream right now. They've got three kills on what is arguably a later game team composition. They're already winning the early game, uh, even in a vein lane, you know? You, you don't expect something like that with zero jungle pressure. That was entirely 2v2 down there, and they managed to come out on top. And it was excellent kiting by Liberty and excellent support coming out from Bark Bark, just because the last moment where you saw Liberty flash, he was waiting for that Zenith Blade. He knew it was coming out, held onto the flash. Like you said in Champion Select, this guy is just renowned for keeping cool under pressure, holding onto that flash until he absolutely needs it. And then he used it to get an extra kill, so really props to them, and it shows why they're definitely looking to be the stronger team in this matchup, and why they managed to get second place last year in the Oceanic Championship. The other thing to note in that skirmish as well, Bark Bark, we were talking about how later on in the game, he's not heaps of peel. And actually in that fight, he didn't go, I need to peel for liberty, he went, okay, Liberty is only being aggressed upon by Peng. He can handle the Leona, that's okay. I am going to keep Leona and Jinx separated. I'm going to keep Jinx away from this fight. And that's another way you can actually create a favorable situation for your AD without explicitly being right by their side and peeling. So very smart moves there. And you could arguably bring that all back to Oshu ones very early play in the jungle. They knew that the Javan wasn't going to turn up and turn that fight around. So they could be as patient as they needed in that entire fight. And wow, Tam Jong actually getting caught out of the mid lane. Flag and drag straight through. Tam Jong actually nice shield, but there's got to be something. It's going to be the flash for the Zensa that is that something to finish him off. And a nice kill pick up there. I was about to say how uh, a similar thing happened in the mid lane where O2-1 was able to make a move knowing Bonky Bonky wouldn't be as strong. But Bonky Bonky is still very strong. Oh, is he? What a chunk! Flash forward! O2-1 wants it! He gets it! The red buff burn is enough and Zensa can barely respond. And immediately that kill traded for. And Dream are just not taking their foot off the gas pedal right now. They're keeping things going. They're being the proactive team. They're keeping the game completely under their control. I wouldn't be surprised if once level 6 rolls around, they all move upon the dragon and force a team fight out there. They're going to have the shockwave. Hang on, Kun's in trouble. Oh, are you going aggressive? Oh, the fish lands! It doesn't even need to go down, actually. The ignite was enough there. Had a bit of skirmish in the bottom lane as well. I was about to say, Fizz is about to reach a, a rough point against that Aurelia, where Aurelia starts to hit some spikes, but are you playing that really nicely, knowing that spike was coming and getting a kill in before? Yeah, so we can have a look at the score. 5-1, to one, and like I said before, Dream. They're a late game team composition, just essentially on that vein. Oriana definitely plays into the mid to later games too. And with the Fizz and Nidalee frontline, you know, it's not necessarily all that tanky, but if they can get ahead, if they can get into the late game first, essentially, they're going to have the advantage because they're definitely more assassin-based frontliners, and 
that's going to be huge for them later on. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes for Doge, if they can catch it back up. But I'm, I'm definitely expecting, if the laning phase continues as it's going right now, it's going to be Dream just getting further and further ahead. Doge have got to change things up. The thing I do want to bring up though, and actually Stab getting aggressive on, last proc of the custom blows does find you play under the turret, along with the third silver bolts and a nice condemned back into the turret. Stab took a huge chunk there actually. I was about to say, uh, Big props to Step. Oh, wow, Peng getting caught out again with that Zenith Blade. The dashboard from Liberty. Now Liberty carding for his life. There's going to be the stun from Echo landing down in just a minute. Liberty, the exhaust running down. And teleport coming in from Fizz. He's found Peng and Step, zoning them off to the side here. And now it looks like Dream could be pincered, but they're actually the ones in control here, splitting up Doge. Yeah, and it's, it's definitely play. looking tense as a team fight's about to happen, but look at the bottom lane for uh, Doge here. They're, they're not in any position to come and assist any team fights, but luckily, Doge, they know this dragon's going on. But luckily for them, and more importantly, knowledgeably, they know that they can't do anything about it. They need to get back to lanes sooner and try and trade anything they can. They're going to get a little bit of more time with Aurelia in the top lane, a little bit more XP. It's, it's definitely not a good trade by any means, but it's not nearly as bad as it could have been if they decided to go in. You know, there are only three red wards down on this map, and one of them only went down about 10 seconds ago. That really says something about how this game is going. Dream, they didn't just push for a little bit of an advantage. They turned it into vision control as well, and they started doing that very early on, which is why they've been able to make a lot of these moves safely. And as well, they knew that Liberty was going to be a bit of a focus for Doge, and they were, oh wow, OG1 finds Bonky Bonky again, Bonky Bonky did get the grub, but who's in trouble here, I can't even tell, Bonky Bonky flash away over the wall, the burn is on, OG1, he wants to find it, goes over the wall, Bonky Bonky does manage to pick that one up, and Liberty going forward finds Bonky Bonky, now Stab is in trouble, the third rock is above, the Glacier Fisher going down to try and zone out Zensum, and he dashes forward, Liberty does pick it up, but he's dead under the turret himself, as Zensum picks that one up, the shutdown is pretty huge, and a two for two across the board. Yeah, so I mean, picking up an even trade, definitely in favor of the team that's behind, so Doge are going to be at least a little bit happy with that trade. Uh, even as bad as it looked, you know, deep in their own territory, and Dream getting a little bit greedy, and that's the thing that may end up being their downfall. They, they are playing a risky comp, but definitely something that's high risk but high payoff. So if things do go badly, Dream may be able to capitalize on some of the mistakes. Uh, sorry, Doge may be able to capitalize on some of the mistakes of Dream and move it into their advantage. Maybe look at taking the next dragon away from them. Because you look at the team comp, it, it, it's still a solid team composition, and even if behind, they can bring things back if they play the team fights right. Uh, despite Dream being quite slippery, it's quite hard to play off that slipperiness, you know? It's, it's hard to actually dodge all the things on the enemy team. You've got the Javan engage, you've got Aurelia hopping all around the place, and notably Solar Flares coming out of every single team fight. So, while it's slippery, it's hard to be slippery, and I feel like Doge should be able to capitalize on some of the mistakes coming out of Dream. The big thing there was OG1, actually there he is again, he's getting very aggressive in that side of the jungle and Doge is starting to wise up to it, they're not going to let him continue to get away with it, we already just saw it there. He's actually really low, I don't even know if it's safe for him to be roaming up towards this top side to look for a fight. He's actually possibly going to have to back or at very least use a lot of mana healing himself. But Doge, they've wised up to it, they're not going to let him continue to get away with that and that means that OG1 He's going to find himself at a point of diminishing returns with this jungle pressure he's putting on Bonky Bonky. As I say that, Bonky Bonky caught just on the edge of the shockwave. Nice cataclysm. Tried to trap Ojuwan, but he jumps over the wall instead. Dream. I feel like they shouldn't be getting away with it. Oh, wow. Pressure in the top lane as well. Oh, I, I, you, with the playful trickster finishing off that kill. The fish that he is. And once again, it's the slipperiness coming out from Dream, but it, it, it's also kind of oh no, the rocket's oh no. coming in. Who's it gonna hit? Uh, Who's it gonna, gonna get hit? Anyone? Oh, that's unfortunate. No, it, it, it's gone wide. But any, in, in, anyway, anyway, as I was saying, uh, the slipperiness from Dream adds into a lot of their baiting style because. Uh, Doge are so engage heavy, so get right in your face and have almost no ways of getting out. They can bait things in, just like you saw IU do. Uh, he baited Kunin, he tried to bring him in and was able to completely turn things around, even though it looked like it was in favor of Kunin. That's the nature of this team comp, and I'm going to keep mentioning it as this game goes on, just because that's one of the big strengths coming out from Dream right now, because in, in general it seems like they are just outplaying every single lane, so 
it, it, it definitely shows that they've got what looks to be a higher skill cap right now, and they're definitely able to just emphasize that in the fact that they can bait people in as well as make better strategic plays. I think that's a very good point you made. You only briefly made it, but of course, uh, Doge, they're good on the aggression, but they don't have much peel, uh, defensively speaking. They've really just got the Leona, and Jarvan is a little bit iffy if you use him for peel. It's, it's not quite so reliable. Hold on, Ochi one coming up to the top side. Finding good, the speed is go wide, but Funky Funky, the trap was late, and executed. IU goes down at Ochi one He's in a bit of trouble if he sticks around too long. Gonna have to back off. Oh, oh, he found Kunda. Does he want to go over the kill? He does! Nice splash from Kundo. Now O2-1, he's gonna have to run it towards enemy territory. It's a long, long walk for Tam Jong if he wants to join him. Wow, O2-1 getting out of there like it ain't even a thing. How incredible. At the same time, bottom lane turret about to go down. And we do wow. see Doge move a bit more on the defensive, laying down those flame chompers in case of any kind of assault coming out for the dream team. And I, I definitely <laughs> agree with oh, them. Oh, Bunky this. Bunky. This time he finds O2-1, catching him just after the leap goes down. And Bunky Bunky, a little bit of poison tick, but not quite enough to finish him off there. That was at long last punishing O2-1 for maybe staying around for a little bit too long. And also O2-1 using that leap when he didn't really need to. Yeah, and I've got to say, as, as a team, Dream, they like to play to the crowd. They like to go for aggressive plays, that fla those flashy kind of plays, and someone sticking around forever, O2-1, he was looking to try and maybe sneak a kill at low health, look like a great player, and definitely got punished for it. So if Doge are going to come back from anywhere, I think it's going to be from those plays, because right now, they're not going to be able to outlane Dream. Dream are just too far ahead in that sense. They're not going to be able to out-rotate them. They need to look for Dream to make those riskier plays, make those plays that show off their skill, and punish them for it if they're going too hard. And that's exactly what Doge need to do. And with Dragon coming up in five seconds, they also need to get some vision down on it. That they definitely do. I feel like if, uh, if anything, it's really going to be the turnaround for this team comp. It's going to be the Echo. I think a, a strong Echo that is maybe able to, if not shut down Tamjong and Liberty, uh, at least keep them out of the fight. That's really going to be uh, a deciding factor as we come into the middle state of this game. That being said, Dream now picking up their second Dragon. Already about 3.5k gold ahead. Two Dragons, one turret, and a nice crop of kills as well. They need to start looking at how they turn this into closing the game, rather than just continuing to pressure lanes. So, Luden's Echo actually coming out for, well, Echo, <laughs> right now, Zen's uh -huh. that item up. Yeah, he even has a little quote when he picks it up, he's like, I have to buy this item. But, picking that up, it's an important choice, because it gives him a bit of a power spike, and you've already seen, he's been one of the main contributors to swinging the game back a little bit more in favor of Doge. And we see Khan, he's able to get away from that, really is pretty good at that, but, like I said, he's been a key component. And there you see, only one on this team, without any deaths, because... Echo, just such a slippery champion. He's been level 6 for a while now, and is going to be able to make those plays, punish bad plays, that come out from Dream being a little bit too greedy, trying to show off. But uh, by picking up Luden's Echo, it's going to allow him to do that even more. It's one of the biggest power spikes that Echo can pick up. I really want to see Dream uh, start to push this vision in towards the mid lane, around those kind of side bushes, a little bit up the jungle ramps, and make a play around that mid lane turret. I feel like this is really the right time for it because they got the fizz there that can keep a team quite hamstrung under a turret by throwing out the fish uh, in the right kind of direction. Uh, they've also got the shockwave that kind of follows it up. If they need, they can dive. If not, they can just kind of hold on to while they chip away at the turret. And uh, actually gonna be the opposite play coming out here is Bark Bark is a man alone trying to hold this turret while people be coming in from the side. Where is Dream? They're nowhere to be seen. Mark Mark, he needs to get out of there. He's gonna get blown up any second now. And actually, no! They wanna keep it going. The Shockwave whips, so Mark Mark gets stuck into the Cataclysm. Bonky Bonky does go down. Mark Mark's not also alive. Finally goes down to the Jinx. Meanwhile, the top lane, IU is good picking fights. IU, he looks like he's gonna get turned around upon. No! He's the one that turns it around. A spear whips for O2-1 as Peng Yiliang calls back. Wait, now Liberty comes in in the final hour. Is on. Finds Peng Yiliang. One shot that. Sam under the turret, condemned against the wall. That's gonna be a clean up for O2-1. And now it's turned around. Dream, they were nowhere to be seen, but then they suddenly showed up, and what a performance they put on. Oh, it looked, it looked so good for Doge right there. They had a good rotation. They caught Dream on the back foot. They found the mid lane turret, only defended by the support. They took down the turret. 
and that's where they should have left it. They should have gone out of there. They saw that Dream were arriving, and you know you have to expect that because they took so long to take the turret down. They had enough time to do it, and they had enough time to get out. But they stayed looking for extra kills. They know that they can't win in even fights. So they should have backed out, but unfortunately, looking for a few too many kills and got punished for it. Again as well, Bonky Bonky used the Cataclysm in a, a more semi-defensive fashion. It trapped up Bark Bark and it did secure the kill on him, but it didn't stop the advance of Dream. And it didn't turn the tide to the fight, and Bark Bark probably would have gone down anyway. If anything, what it did was trapped Bonky Bonk into a nice convenient ring where Dream could surround him and clean him off, stopping him from escaping himself. So, Bonky Bonky, when he's not using that Cataclysm aggressively, he seems a little bit lost as to how to use it and arguably whether or not to use it. Bark Bark, he just doesn't care. He's gonna walk right on up to the top lane straight through Bonky Bonky and Kun, but he could get punished for an IU taking a bit of a chunk as well. Bark Bark! There's some places he can't just take an afternoon stroll as the rocket goes wide as well. And I, I, I don't think that this is Dream slipping up. I think this is, well, I mean, it is, but it's not them knowing that they're slipping up, you know? It's, it's, they think they're just so far ahead in this game that they can do things without worrying too much. And that was just an example of it. Bark Bark thinks he's tanky enough, thinks that IU's going to be there to bail him out of trouble. IU didn't have his ultimate up, so a bit of a lack of communication, I believe, from his team, and they weren't able to do anything about it. But Bonky Bonky's gone. Oh, she won the one. Caught the fish, did go out. Only finds Bonky Bonky. Oh, one being chased down by Kun. IU, though, turning it around at Bonky Bonky. Couldn't. He needs to find Oh, one. Well, this is going to be all for nothing. And then there's still the question would they be able to turn it around on IU? I don't know if they can. Kun can't even turn it around on Oh, one. Oh, one. Finally goes down. IU, though, he picked that one up in return. Now, here comes the rope. IU going to get punished for staying around too long. And that was a nice out rotation by Doge. Oh no, I don't recall. You've got Vayne on the other side of the map. You've got a perfect opportunity to take down a top lane turret. Zenzer, he's going to be able to do it. And they are sending back Vayne. reinforcements to take down Liberty, but... I mean, look at this turret. It, it's going to be a turret trade for, you know, a slight loss in, in a trade in teammates. And that may be a bit of an advantage. That means lanes are going to shove a little bit further down on that lane. And with Dream so far ahead, despite being only 19 minutes into the game, Baron's very much going to be on the table. And if they can get that bottom lane to slow push up and distract the team, hang on, we may have a fight here. No, he's going to get out. If they can get that bottom lane to slow push up in favor of Dream, they can look in key position to go for a Dr uh, Baron attempt, even this early on. I feel like Dream are afraid of grouping up. Uh, they're afraid of the team fight composition from Doge, and I think that's smart. They're giving it respect, and it's a respect that I think the team composition still deserves. But at the same time, by not grouping up and also not looking for picks, they're just going to continue playing this lane, and we're out of the lane phase. We've already seen Doge can out-rotate this team. Really, Dream can't continue to do this, or they will slowly start throwing away their lead. We're already seeing it here once again. Doge, all four members grouped up, making an incursion into the Dreamside jungle as this dragon comes close to life. They're looking to make the plays, and Dream isn't really punishing them. They're not really leveraging their lead into what could be favorable picks and team fights in these situations. Oh, in the top lane though. Finds the turret. Can he find Kundo? Send the blades coming down. It's really down to the wire, and Kun is the one to get it. Oh, IU with the burn actually on that trident, Seastow trident there. Didn't quite have the plates and tricks to connect for damage, uh, which would have probably had him getting the kill and walking out alive. But it just goes to show, uh, despite everything that's gone down, those two top lanes are fairly evenly matched. Speaking of evenly matched, Tang is unevenly matched as it goes up with the glacial fissure. And uh, that's really going to give Dream the advantage in this dragon side area. This is what I'm talking about. This is what Dream needs to be doing. They're group top. They found the pick. They found the dragon. And now they're going to apply some pressure. They at long last leveraged their lead and punished the moves that Doge were making. Dragon number three. This is going to give a large advantage to Dream just with that movement speed like you were saying before. Doge, one of their key things holding them in this game is the fact that they are able to rotate around well enough to take advantage of any mistakes. No. Jumping into the middle of nowhere, smooth moves by OG1 had that water push. And he goes down. That's a huge ultimate unavailable now, and this is going to be a very, very scary siege uh, for the defending team Doge here. Yeah, they're going to have to use the wave clear. What a catch! Stab and Nexus! This it is able to get out. Flash over the wall as well. Nice done up from the Leona. But Peng, he's going to be the focus now. Under the turret is going to get away. Now here comes Kun from the side looking to find Bark Bark, but he can't go in there alone. He knows it, and he's going to back out as the turret goes down. 
and you can really see the story of this game if you compare the items between the teams. Look at the mid lane, you've got Tam Jong Q, he's 90 CS ahead of Zenzo, he's got his Rabadons, he's got his finished Athenes, and you look at Zenzo, he's got a Ludens and an Echo, an entire half item behind Tam Jong Q, and that's, that's huge on someone like Echo, because you need to be ahead, you need to be the one making plays, and you're not going to be able to do that if you're an entire item behind. And you look at the score and you see, that's that's the guy doing the best on Doge right now. And it, it's it's really just showing how far behind Doge are. They're 11,000 gold down, they're three dragons behind, four turrets behind. It's not going to be likely that they can turn this game around. Despite having an alright frontline, you know, quite a beefy frontline that can punish bad engages that come out from Dream. And even with Dream doing those risky plays, those, those plays that like to show off their skill that do have the chance of not quite going the way they want, it's, it's still going to be so difficult to come back from this, just because Dream can afford to make so many mistakes right now just because they're so far ahead. And the other thing is Doge, I mean, you mentioned, yeah, they've got a fairly beefy front line if they, if they need it, but Bane is already in the later parts of the game, already has Blade of the Rune King and a Phantom Dancer, plus the Quicksilver Sash that she can keep fairly safe from uh, the likes of Irelia and even arguably the, the owner stun if that does come down on top of her. So, that front line isn't really tanky up against their main. You see it right there, Ping Yilian getting shredded down as the shockwave comes through. Bonky Bonky embraces the tab jump, does fall over the top lane as well, a two on one skirmish. Looks like in the mid lane, just keep backing out. Kun does go down, Liberty running for his life. No, turns around, eats the cork. Double kill for stab. What a turn around there. Doge chasing it down and uh, finding a couple of crucial kills. That's going to be a two for one trade, exactly what Dream need. And as once again, a bit of an example of Dream going for risky plays. They had Tam Jong Q a little bit thought out there. Uh, Liberty there to back him up, and we can see the huge amount of damage that those two can do together. But good shield timing kept uh, kept Stab alive, kept him from dying in that fight. But again, it was just Dream looking for kills where any other team would say that's a bit too risky. We're not going to go for that. Too much is on the line. But Dream are just so confident in their ability to take out this game that I believe that it, it, it's what Doge is going to be able to capitalize on, even if they are that far behind. The thing is, yes, how long a... until how long until that stops paying off for Dream? Is really the question. Oh no. I mean, they're getting away oh, with it. No. Wow. Ping. No. Oh, buddy, the fish goes out. There's the cat to follow it up. And that's this should one be barren. deadly owner. But as I was saying, I, I mean, granted, that's the exact opposite of what I was uh, supposing just a moment ago. But you know, how long until that stops paying off the dream? How long until they get a little bit punished for you know, picking uh, over aggressive fights uh, and riskier plays? Maybe not in this match, but certainly it's something Doge can look at in, uh, in further matches against Dream. Also, they committed two members to that top lane to take down Kun, which really felt like the wrong place to be. They're just kind of running around playing it a little bit like solo queue sometimes here. The thing is, though, they can get away with doing that, and, you know, maybe perhaps they, they just find it a little bit more fun. They're looking for more of a fun game because they, they got second place last semester, and Maybe they're just not respecting Doge right now. Remember, these guys are from the same university, so it's very likely that they've played together. They know the approximate skill level. Oh, oh, hold that thought, though, because a nice three-man cataclysm. Two men do get out of it, but Tam Jong and Ocean want to slow down my back. Trying to run away. He's so beefy, though. They still got him down. Now, Monster Monkey Bunny should be turned around on Ocean 1. Yet, Flo couldn't find him on the far side. Is he going to be able to take him down? Who knows? OG1 juking it away over the wall. Liberty is in the middle of the fight now. Stab from the wall trying to put some DPS down. Mark back. The glacial. Sorry, the winter spike does miss. And now it's just going to be the defensive for Woofer Doge. Nobody quite dying on either side. I feel like that was about as good as an engage as Woofer Doge are going to get, though. And they didn't find any kills off it. So many ultimates actually used up by Dream there. Oh, if they can catch Liberty, others should be big. And Liberty wouldn't be the one to catch. Whoa! That super mega death rocket is the one that finds it. Even as Liberty juked his way away from Bonky Bonky and nice and deadly came out there. There's a catch though. Yeah, this should allow Doge to maybe take a bit of an advantage, take a tower somewhere. They're going to send Kuhn up into the top lane to defend against that Fizz. They should be able to look at maybe taking a turret down. I mean, Liberty's down for 20 seconds. They've got to be careful of Tam Jong Q. Here he oh, comes. Though. Speaking of, they find him under the turret as the Echo that goes deep on that, but Pink Iliang goes down. Bunky Bunky is in the same kind of trouble. They couldn't find the kill on Tam Jong. 
What a turnaround. I use one of the top lane getting a solo kill on Kun. Now Stab and Zen, so they're gonna have to run for their lives. Mark Bart finds the witchy fight. Here's gonna be able to one following it up. The shutdown coming through for Stab. Now it's just Zenster alone, and he is out of mana and almost out of time. Flash having to be burnt. It's gonna get him to safety, but that's the entire dream lineup still alive. No, they want a dragon. They don't quite want that inhibitor, as juicy as it looks. Yeah, a bit surprised by that play, but like I said before, Dream, you know, they, they almost know that they've got this in the bag. I don't blame them because you look at every part of the game right now. So many towers ahead, so much gold ahead, so many kills ahead, so many items ahead, so much CS ahead, so many dragons ahead. That's a lot of things in the game that they're ahead in, and you know, you can just look at the items. I think that's the most important thing to see. You compare the AD carries, you mentioned it before, Blade of the Ruin King, Phantom Dancer, a Quicksilver Sash, and what's soon to be an Infinity Edge. Compared to uh, Stab's Infinity Edge and Static Edge, that's like an entire item behind. Uh, in fact, maybe an item and a half, and that's huge for the AD carries as well. Same story in the mid lane. Rabidons, Athenes, and Void stuff. That's an entire item ahead of the enemy mid laner. And like I said before, Echo's a champion that needs to be ahead in items to have a big effect on the game. Dream slowly starting to close it out now. They are still taking some slightly riskier fights here and uh, actually no sorry i misread that i was going to say the gold lead has been narrowed a little bit that is a lie it's just been widened in any case though dream now they're starting to cluster and clump together they're looking for that final push they are still giving a lot of respect to the doge team fight and uh i still think that's the right call only thing is as they get closer and closer to these uh base turrets you know the inhibitors and exit turrets it's harder and harder to find the sort of picks that are going to end the game so they are just playing it a bit slowly, Bonky Bonky actually taking a chunk down there. They're going to try and go for the inhibitor, Bonky Bonky going in, looks for IU. IU juking it out though, a nice cataclysm catches the lot, but IU already taking down Mark, 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 sorry, Bonky Bonky living on the back line, still alive and a massive chunk of health to hit King Tim, going, Dengs are caught up under a turret now, six of us close the health down there, IU. Ooh, does get oh, does. Up, mega death rocket. It would have gone past him actually if it hadn't have been for uh, Brahm picking it up, but in any case, that is a 1 for 3 plus inhibitor. This is Dream starting to close it out. Now it looks like they're turning their attention to the mid lane. Yeah, and honestly, that's exactly what they should be doing. If they're looking to get the win as soon as they can, getting that next inhibitor down is going to be very important. Both Echo, Jarvan, uh, and, and Leona, they're all down right now. This is a 100% guaranteed inhibitor. Another one down. That's going to be a huge amount of pressure being shoved into the base of Doge right now, who are already playing from the back foot. In fact, from the start of the game, they've been playing from the back foot. And now with Super Minions in their base, they're going to have no options to even safely leave their base. So they're going to have to look for picks right next to their Nexus, and that is so risky. If things go wrong, that's the end of the game. That's game one gone over to Dream, and while while it's likely that that's already going to happen, uh, Doge, you know, they're probably looking for anything they can do right now, but what's likely happening is that they're just discussing what's going to happen next game. They know that this game's very likely not going to go in their favor, and they're just looking for a way to deal with what Dream have pulled out this game, how are they going to deal with it in the next game? Are they going to keep the bans the same? Are they going to look for maybe a Nidalee ban, maybe a Vayne ban? But Liberty, his, his AD carry pool is quite large actually, so he's quite hard to ban out. But in any case, getting back to this game, Dream are a little bit on the offensive side here. They definitely are. They're finding Peng Yang and there's really nowhere he can go. He actually goes in. What a shot frame on the back line. Finds Bunk Bunk so not the squish here. Bunk Bunk going into the Cataclysm. But he knows he's not going to find anything. It's just a little bit of a trap uh, and a temporary one at that. IU getting all of the aggressive spot, he isn't going to go down as Liberty comes in to clean the floor. Finds Kun, chasing out Zenser. May or may not be able to find him. Ah, there he goes, the double kill. That's the eighth. Teleported to the base from IU, and that's going to be all she wrote for this game. Though she's asked himself, how are they going to punish the dream play in the next game? Okay, next game, they've got to start swapping up fans. But the problem is. Dream already have a whole lot of champions that need to be banned out. You can't give them Rumble, you can't give them Alistair. What are they going to do? They're going to need to punish the vein a little bit harder. It didn't work out in this game. In fact, just a straight up 2v2, Liberty was able to come out on top. I think moreover, there were a lot of places Dream wasn't playing optimally. A lot of places they could have been punished. And Doge need to be aware of that. They need to go, okay, Dream play a little bit over aggressively sometimes. That's a window where we can turn that around on them. And that's something they're going to need to start doing. So it might not even be, you know, a pick and ban difference. It, I feel like really it's just a gameplay difference. And if they see Dream go for that aggressive style composition again, 
Doge need to put themselves in a position to counter it out. But in any case, that is game number two. And as much as we are going to see game number two, that is going to happen in a few minutes, guys. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back.